gentlemen, we are in a system. And that system is our enemy. Take a look around you. What do you see? Me Too accusations, social justice warriors, crazy feminists, and hopelessly emasculated men. The very minds of the people we are trying to save. But until we save those minds, those people are part of the system, and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand, most of these men are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so hopelessly controlled by blue pill lies that they depend on the system and they will fight to protect it. As a man, which do you prefer? To remain willfully ignorant of masculine and feminine truths or to get out of your comfort zone and to seek the truth that the system does not want you to know? If you're a man who seeks the truth no matter how uncomfortable, then you know what you must do. Join me and I will teach you exactly what a woman is thinking without even listening to a single word that comes out of her mouth. This is the power of understanding body language. In addition to this, you will be entered into the Masculine Empowerment Network and join hundreds of unplugged men from all walks of life across the globe. Unfortunately, no one can learn the truth about dating and relationships by simply being told from the system. You must live it and experience it for yourself. That is what Body Language Mastery will do for you. Remember, this is your final chance and all I'm offering you is the truth. Follow me and let's see how deep the rabbit hole goes. So you wanna be a motherfucking hot dude, huh? You wanna bang a bunch of broads? You wanna live that hot dude life? You wanna make a lot of money? You wanna get your fucking fitness sorted out? December 26. You're not going to want to fucking miss out on this. I am telling you, this is going to be the greatest one we've ever done. We got Vince yesterday. Who saw our show? One in, one in the chat, if you saw our show yesterday with Vince. A lot of you guys thought we were going to come in here and talk about Star Wars and geeky shit. And we got deep, deep down the BDSM rabbit hole. And holy shit, um, I, I got to say, his tip about when you pee and then you cut off the stream, like, that that shit works, dude. I, I already saw some difference uh today. And um holy shit, these these hoes better watch out because I'm <laughs> if you want to learn how to get as much sex as humanly possible, live your wildest dreams, and join a network of men who will not emasculate you, not put you down, not tell you, oh, you're fucking crazy with your red pill philosophy and you should only marry single women who are, have also single moms and you should be happy even if a 500-pound girl likes you. Guys who basically say you should eat the shit sandwich that life serves to you. If you're a guy, when life hands you a shit sandwich, you slap that shit sandwich right out of life's hands, you kick life in the stomach and you RKO life straight through a table and say, fuck no, I will not lower myself to these subpar standards. If you're that kind of guy, body language mastery is for you. Get on the waiting list. This shit is blowing up, man. I, 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 I'm I, blown away. I, this is, it's going so, I, like their signups are coming in. I, this commercial kind of worked a little too good. I, I, I'm, I'm, we're going to see what happens, but I already have some, some professionals at Google working on some stuff, but this is going to be insane. There is limited enrollment and I am not joking. This is not some, like, I'm not Anthony Johnson from the fucking 21 convention. When I sit here and lie to you, this is the last time there is no going back after this. Get on the waiting list. Now time is running out modern life dating.com forward slash body language. You got 16 days, four hours and 26 minutes till we go. You're going to scroll down. You're going to click on this link right here. You put your little best email address in right here and then you click subscribe and that's it. And you're locked in. Then you'll get the email confirming that you get uh, the 
we'll start sending out some notifications probably like on the 20th or something. Um, I am not going to blow up your inbox. I am not going to send you a, a million emails every fucking day. During that five-day window, I will send it to you, and that's it. Um, you know, I'm telling you, this this is going to be fucking – this is going to be great. Vince is actually bringing in his girlfriend, and he's going to have her on camera, and he's going to demonstrate BDSM techniques and sexual techniques with her. Where else can you find that in the manosphere, huh? The only the only other person who has access to something like that is Anthony Johnson with his sister. But nobody wants to see that fucking gorilla beast, and nobody cares about their incestual relationship. And apparently, apparently, everybody's so fucking mad about my thing that I did about dude party when I broke down the 21 convention um but <laughs> you know what that means they're watching dude party so thanks so much you fucking losers thank you thank you I know I'm doing the lord's work I know I'm doing an honest work and I know when I call you out on your fucking bullshit and all you want to sit there and be like oh well huh, those guys are just gossiping about us and even though we're running a scam like they're just gossiping they're not real men I'm a ballerina uh, buy my fitness program and right now I'm just gonna sit on twitter all day okay no Eat a bag of dicks, and I know you probably get excited for that, okay? I know you do. But um, fuck you, all right? And all that shit, keep, keep in mind that all that shit that you guys were talking, okay? You guys started this shit. And none of you cowards would say this shit to my face in real life. None of you, because you know what? You're going to get served up the fucking uh, three-piece, baby. One, two, three. Three-piece with the soda. They're, 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 you're not real men. You're being exposed. You have to wake up and understand. It's 2019. You can't scam people anymore. The internet is too strong. Your shit will get out. People will find you out. You will get aired out. And you will get drawn and quartered by the internet. You have to be an honest person these days. This shit doesn't fucking work. Okay? It doesn't fucking work at all. So get in while you still can, guys. Um, all these other guys hating and all that shit, let them, bro. Let them. They're, this, they're, they're downward spiraling into irrelevancy, and it's fucking hilarious, okay? And, hey, if you want to go side with them, go. Go get go learn how to be a ballerina. Go learn how to be a man with very long hair, with a very effeminate face, who has no idea how to juggle multiple girlfriends, has no idea how to have sex with a girl on the first date, has no idea about handling talking with people like that okay th he's just a, this guy's only a professional tweeter he's just this, this is all he does he's this and he does a little bit of this <laughs> i'm a little ballerina like, uh... call me old-fashioned call me old-fashioned but what the fuck like your guy and you're like hmm nfl superstar nah wrestling phenomenon nah Baseball Hall of Famer, nah. Ballet. Ballet. That's what I want to do as a man. I really like those tight, tight leotards they wear. And I love jumping around on my tippy toes with a bunch of girls and a bunch of gay dudes. That's, that's, that's where I'm going with my life. Solid. And then you're gonna go and be uh, Andrew Tate's little bitch boy, little little his little chihuahua on a leash, and you go stay in his basement and be his slave for a couple of months. And as he posts you awkwardly looking around in a nightclub, oh god, I gotta say, there's one clarification that I'm gonna make on Dude Party. I actually talked to Hunter from the Family Alpha, and I was wrong, um, and my panel was wrong as well. Nobody really knew. So apparently, Hunter's wife didn't cheat on him when they were married. Uh, Hunter, she cheated on him eight years before they were married, right after she got out of high school, and he found out eight years later. And then he, apparently he cheated on her when he was married, too. So if anything, I actually kind of gained some respect for Hunter. So, but, um, I saw Hunter was pissed off, whatever, and then he, he, like, somebody tweet, somebody sent me some shit on tweet, on Twitter. I'm not even on Twitter anymore. So, apparently Twitter's lost their fucking mind. Um, about this Dude Party episode, which is great. So be sure to tune in every Saturday for Dude Party, where you can join us. Um, where Dude Party, we bring people from the audience onto the screen as well. Um, so, you know, come come join the panel. And Dude Party's growing in, in uh, you know, popularity and relevancy. 
So, um, yeah. So I, I officially, and I will apologize to Hunter. Um, the story was wrong, and I got the story wrong, and my panel got the story wrong. And you know, I'm not like I'm not like some like ideology like Nazi. I still stand by a lot of the other stuff that was said. But um, I was clearly wrong about Hunter, and I'm a man. Like I don't have like su such like a, like an insane ego that like I just need to be right, bro. I need to be right. Need to be right. No, no. And I reached out to Hunter. I, I DM'd him on Instagram. 2015 was my year. And um, 2016. Uh, James Miller, thank you so year. much for Every the five dollar super chat. He says, "Chance has been a while. Good to be back, mix." James, I was uh, no homo. I was I was admiring your uh, Facebook profile earlier today with your banner photo and like the red Mercedes. I was like, "Look at this motherfucker." And um, I didn't know you hate Michael Vick that much, but uh, what he did to those dogs is pretty terrible. So, and I know you own some pit bulls, so I completely understand your uh perspective um going back to the initial statement is that um yeah what's going on is um yeah red pill mamba red pill mamba i love you dog i heard i heard that you're gonna get into body language mastery and i'm ready and you are putting the time stamps dude i've been you've been the original g for a while man you know you're an awesome guy thank you so much for doing those time stamps um really helped the lazy people who really got their panties, <gasps> excuse me, in a nut. I just drank some some eggnog that I paid $13 for fucking one little, like, little, like, thing of eggnog because eggnog is imported into Japan because they don't celebrate Christmas and they don't drink eggnog. Godless heathens. Uh, so I got a little bit of a hiccup. Pardon me. But Red Pill Mamba, you're the fucking man. I love you, dog. Seriously, you are a good kid. You're doing a lot of good work. If you get in body language mastery, let me know who you are. I'll take care of you. And I appreciate you doing the timestamps, dude. That really – it's a lot of hard work, and I seriously, truly, truly appreciate you, man. Um, I don't know if any of the other guys, Rule Zero and everything, said they appreciate you, but we appreciate you. Uh, good things are coming, guys. Listen, uh, the truth will set you free, and the truth always comes to the light, and the truth is coming out. Um, I can't say what's going on, but um, that whole squad of 21 Convention, they're about to take another loss. Okay, people just keep on dropping off and dropping off and dropping off. And, you know, it, it's going to go – it's just going to be like eventually Anthony just giving a, a fucking speech on, um, you know, how to be inbred. <laughs> uh, so it's going to – anyways, uh, the point is don't be a piece of shit, okay? And um, Hunter Drew from thefamilyalpha.com, uh, I officially apologize to you, man. I love you, dog. You know, we, we kind of split our ways, whatever. Um, but we, we kind of, we kind of just, you know, we shook our hands and say, okay, you're going to go your way. I'm going to go mine. And, and I honestly, I didn't know, I didn't know the story. And honestly, I got it wrong. And so, you know, I, like I said, I kind of gained a little respect for him when I found out he cheated on his wife. I was like, oh shit. No, no, okay. <laughs> so anyways, how about we say what's up to everybody in the chat? And then we will, um, we'll, we're going to talk about today's speciality, uh, that pretty much none of these dorks at, there's only two legitimate speakers at the 21 convention too okay donovan sharp and steve the dean everybody else jokes okay um i think oh i think ed Lattimore speaks there so ed, ed's cool too but I have, ed's neutral on all this but i'm talking about like red pill guys ed's like kind of just like a success guy in general but you guys know ed comes and speaks at the 20 at the uh at the modern life dating uh body language mastery webinars you guys know donovan sharp donovan comes in there crushes it dude um uh, Steve hasn't come in yet because uh, he's just, you know, he's just doing his own thing. But um, I, I got, like, those guys are legit, 100% legit. Uh, everybody else, a bunch of rainbow people. Uh, who cares about them? Uh, D-Money, missed your fucking consultation yesterday. You're lucky I'm a nice guy. I'll just cancel that shit and keep your money. I've been chasing you for a couple months to get your fucking consultation. Let's do this, D-Money. Um, shall we Shall we just say what's up to everybody in the chat real quick? What do we say? So I say, what's up, everybody? Let me do let me do a quick run through. Uh, ben, what's up? Return of the Mac. I've been seeing you a lot, bro. What's up, buddy? Uh, Tommy B. Shelley, what's up? Kevin, what's up? Dave John, looks like you're new. He says, he says, sounds like elite new island when Fred says it. No, it's totally nude island, brother. Uh, Athen, what's up, baby? Stay clear of those uh, those cave scave cave spelunking dangers. Um, I gotta set up the Instagram stream. And we're gonna dude today's episode is gonna be fire, bro. Fire, bro. Let me ask you something. Uh, who likes having sex on the first date? One in the chat. One in the chat if you like having sex on the first date. Two if you like having sex 
uh, later in the in the whole process. Me for, as me personally, it's like uh, these days it's text to sex, baby. Text to sex. Text to sex. Um, anything more is just like okay, uh, I got things to do, lady. Uh, I'm building a digital empire here. I don't know if you got the memo, but I am the grand high commander of the hot dude army, and uh, I got work, I got soldier. a lot of shit to do here. We got a lot of uh, we got another donation coming in. Kevin says because I served in the military, I have a suspicious of sub. I have a subconscious awareness for being manipulated. The more time I approach and I spend time talking with American women, I get angry. Any tips? Uh, Kevin, brother, you have to realize that if you're talking to a woman, you're going to be getting – it's it's already a form of manipulation in itself. So you just have to you know, accept the reality of what's going on and learn how to navigate the uh, sexual marketplace – using the red pill lens of truth right <clears throat> that's it or oh, how to hold on let me put this how to have sex on the first date there we go okay set that up all right cool all right instagram's fired up because you know i got i got invited to go out I got invited. Let me tell you how much I love you guys. Okay, it's it's now it's uh it's eleven twenty p.m. on uh what is say Tuesday night. I got offered by a millionaire friend of mine to go to a uh, local Japanese strip club, and he's gonna pay for everything. And he said, "Come on out, come on out." I was like, "Dude, I'm high commander of the hot dude army." I've got to address my troops. And he's like, listen, come see some of these Japanese hoes. I was like, no, you listen to me. I've got shit to do. I got a show to do, but I'll hit you up after. And let me know if you're still there because I'll, I'll get in a taxi and I'll join you. Uh, so, guys, just so you know, I'm turning down a good old time to be here with you. Yes, you. If you're here and you're listening in, and you're a man who's really just trying to get to that next level, really trying to lift yourself up, I know how it is to be you. I used to be like you on the other side of the screen, listening to Chris from Good Looking Loser. Who remembers that guy? I used to be listening to him a lot. He gives some great advice. And, you know, I just used to have been just on the grind and just trying so hard to get my breakthrough in life. Uh, at this point, you know, this was trying to get my financial breakthrough. Um, I already, I've already sorted chicks now. I've, I've, I've pretty much mastered my game. I would say at 27 is when I really like everything clicked, and I was just like, just like clockwork, just sex, 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 right? Um, I've never really been like an incel kind of guy, or like, oh, I didn't lose my virginity until I was 20 or anything. Like, I lost my virginity when I was 17. Um, and I just wanted to to perfect my technique, which I did do. And, um, you know, then I really began the pursuit of, like, financial excellence. And now I've got so much momentum. Um, income property is about to be established next year. Everything's working. But the point I'm trying to make is that if you're a guy out there, you're starting off your morning, tuning in and listening to a guy like me who puts out content for men specifically, okay, you guys know two things. My ally is only one thing. My ally is the truth, and a powerful ally it is, right? Uh, if you know what uh, what kind of quote I twisted, uh, props to you. You'll, you'll know what movie that's from. My ally is the truth, and a powerful ally it is. And uh, number two is, um, you know, I'm here for you guys, and you guys know. You guys from Body Language Mastery, you guys know how much I give behind the webinars, and... Um, I'm just so excited to really start off the year right with this program. Um, we're having the best fucking webinars ever. Uh, this thing is going to be top to bottom, going to be fucking amazing, man. So uh, get excited uh, and just know that if you're like a guy tuning into me and listening to me and, and not 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 necessarily like, oh, you're I'm listening to Jonathan. Like, no, but like, you know, listening to this type of stuff, you know what I mean? male self-improvement, searching for truth, and taking action, trying to make your life better. You have to know that you are better than the average person, 
by the fact that you're even looking for this stuff or listening for this stuff, that right there shows you that you are far above the average person. And all I can tell you is keep going, keep pursuing this excellence, keep fighting, and inevitably, whatever you want, <coughs> excuse me, whatever you want, <coughs> oh God, it's air conditioner drying me out, um, <coughs> Whatever you want, I'll cough to death. I'll get this fucking message out. I don't give a shit. <coughs> oh, excuse me, guys. I'm so sorry. Um, it will, it will, it will happen. It will come true. You have to put your head down. And you got to keep fucking grinding. Keep trying. Okay, keep trying. Keep looking. You know, and you will inevitably get what you want so keep that in mind anybody who's at anybody james miller's is probably uh james miller is definitely financially speaking in the top 10 percent of all men he's in this chat right now i know james miller personally great man uh in his 40s still has immaculate game immaculate game and fucking good looking guy got his beautiful house got a nice car got some dogs he's got a vasectomy he's like fuck it i'm fucking hosed the day i die <clears throat> he's living the dream and he will tell you that persistence is probably one of the most important things if not the most important thing when chasing excellence and success and you know that's why rich gets so mad too rich cooper he was on the show earlier when he was like you know when when we when he when you talk to rich about people giving up man rich gets pissed like he fucking hates people who give up so just know gentlemen you're on the right path every single one of you okay Every single one of you. Just keep that in mind. That's my that's my morning message to all you boys, okay? Fucking love you guys. <clears throat> um so yes, Ellie Ron, even you. Every anybody, man. Everyone. Scott says, John, fucking episode last night was fire, and I'll be choking and tying bitches up all 2020. <laughs> ha My man. Simon, what's up, buddy? Simon, you're the fucking man. Thank you for all your help yesterday. Um, Tom, 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 I love you, buddy. Praise the Lord. MLD gave up the strip club for what it was. <laughs> Shut up, Ellie Ranner. I'll ban you into a fucking oblivion, motherfucker. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, you can't give up, man. Can't give up. All you guys are hustlers. You know, like, Afim is getting his fucking extremely difficult, uh, engineering degree. Um, you know, fucking Simon's doing the Bitcoin thing, and he's also handling the social media. Lou is getting ready to get for his fucking third, pr or... I think it's like a, he got a new prom. He got wait. Lou got a new job with me. It's like about twenty grand increase in salary, and now he might make get another job, and that uh, that'll push him up even more. I'm not gonna go into too too much detail, but fucking hell, man, it's unbelievable how how much progress he's making. <clears throat> so, anyways, uh, yeah, guys, I'm really happy to be here. Um, uh, hey, uh. Agil says, hey, John, does Bitcoin discount extend to all your services, even body language mastery? Not body language mastery. Not body language mastery. Sorry, buddy. I love you, but sorry. Um, 499 Super Chats. In. I, uh, Christian Martin. Oh, what's up, dude? I was talking about you to a, uh, Josh the other day. He says, I feel alive again. Even year. if I mess it up, 2016. it doesn't awesome. matter. You taught yeah, me how to bounce Every back. Year is my fucking Who year remembers Christian Martin? Who remembers Christian Martin? Christian, Christian was was uh, exceptionally pathetic when his ex girlfriend dumped him, and he was a mess, man. And I got on a Skype consultation with this guy, and I see this fucking good looking white young educated guy who's driven and has has is making a well above the uh, uh, the na the national average salary, and. The poor guy was in pieces, and I was just like, listen, you need to wake the fuck up and realize your value, and you need to stop pining over this terrible bitch that you used to date. He was dating some fucking atrocity, and she was just treating him like shit, and then, you know, he was paying for the therapy for them, couples therapy, and she was still treating him like shit, and then the therapist started, like, teaming up with uh, her against him. But we sorted him out, and now he's fucking, he's fucking, you know, he's, he's, he joined Body Language Mastery after the, we did a consultation, then he got into quarter, I believe it was quarter three, Body Language Mastery, 
And now he just pops in once in a while because he's actually out in the real world being happy, having tons of sex, got a new girlfriend, going to concerts and all that stuff. And he did the work. He's the man. He is the fucking man. I'm very proud of you. <clears throat> good stuff, man. Very, very good stuff. Uh, so what we're going to talk about is, for you guys that don't know, um, I have a – I I kind of recently kind of shut it down. But I had a – it was it was like – I did this a while ago, but I did a um, – uh, what do you call a, a sound cloud. I used to have a little mini podcast. And what we're going to do is we're going to play an excerpt from – uh, this podcast when I talk about how to have sex on the first date, and we're gonna we're gonna take we're gonna take a time jump. We're gonna go back and listen to young Jonathan, younger Jonathan. I'm still young, right? Thirty four is young. Yeah, I feel young. Hey, you know what a guy told me is one of one of these guys. He was a pal of mine. He said, "Hey, you're only as old as the bitches you bang." So, feeling young. Feeling like I'm in my 20s. Would love to feel 19. <laughs> uh, that's my that's my bad guy laugh. You, know, you could do the Ganon, the Ganondorf laugh. <laughs> From uh, Legend of Zelda, uh, Ocarina of Time. Great game. I want to buy some Zelda posters. Um, where is this thing? I just downloaded it. <clears throat> Sort by date. Let's do that. Ah, oh, here we go. Is this it? Okay, here we go. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so I got a, I got a little podcast that I'm going to play. Um, and then we will, we're going to listen to it. So, okay, honesty time, honesty time. Real, I need to, I need to pull the audience. Okay, so I want you to put a number three in the chat. If you have a little difficulty consistently having sex on the first date, give me a three in the chat. Three in the chat if you are consistently having trouble getting sex on the first date. Like you just can't you, – you can't pull it out. Like for me, it's a, it, it's just me, whop, pull it out. Like we're doing this. We're doing this. Like that's – it's just – it's as simple as one, two, three. And guys, I'm not gonna like just just put the three in the chat if it's you. Um, I'm not gonna like shame you or whatever, but I just need to see where everybody is in the audience and see if like this is a valid message that people can use. <clears throat> Tom Bombadil, you're a Christian man. What are you doing? Two point nine. Okay. Um, two wheels only one. Awesome. Welcome. One point five. I've had that like five times in my life. Dear Lord, we got to get those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers. Um, the SoundCloud is full of gold. Uh, John, how's the gym going? Crushed it yesterday. <clears throat> going to the beach this morning. Winter in Florida. Oh, which beach are you going to, Tom? Let me know. Um. Okay. Okay. Go, go. We got a couple of people that need some help. More than a couple. Okay. Good. 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 All right. Let's take a listen here. So the first thing is, guys. <clears throat> When you um when you're gonna go and attempt for the uh, sex on the first date, right? The biggest thing is you have to make sure that your logistics are are on point. You know what I mean? Um, you have to like make sure you have to make sure that your logistics. Okay, so let me show you. What, this is what it means. Okay, so let's take a look here. We got a, we got a little whiteboard here, okay? <clears throat> so let's say this is the what I like to call the P O P, okay? The pop. Right, this is point of penetration, okay? This is your house. Or this is wherever. This is your house, okay? Or this is your your hotel. Okay, or maybe you're in Japan and it's a love hotel. Okay, or maybe you're like Rick Torres and you just say, fuck it. This is my car and you're going to suck my dick or we're going to have sex in here. Okay. Now, I don't necessarily recommend the car, but hey, 
in those moments of passion, it happens. I've had sex in a car. I've had sex on top of the hood of a car. Um, I've done it all. <clears throat> so first is like your your point of penetration, right? This is this you have to yeah, when you're planning your first dates, <clears throat> you need to have your um your logistics on point, okay? That's what you need here. Let me see. Is this, is this working, by the way? Let me see. Is the stream working? Okay, cool, 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 cool. Okay, let's go back here. So <clears throat> so you got your, your POP, your point of penetration, right? So now wherever you're going to go, okay? So for me, I like to go to... Who knows what this is? Put some titties on there. Bump, bump. This is kind of a. This is Starbucks, right? <laughs> that's a. That's a. That's not. That's not a venti. <clears throat> so this is like the. You know, this is the date location. So the DL, right? Date location. Okay. So my go-to, and we're what we're going to review today is the whole um <clears throat> the logistics so logistics are your your planning and uh your traveling okay so from the point of penetration to the date location okay this area right here this is your travel time okay this travel time should be at the absolute worst 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 is 15 minutes okay It'd be 15 minutes now the best is 10 minutes 10 minutes or less okay 10 minutes is what you want to go for put a little star there okay 10 minutes is what you want okay so a lot of guys, they read that old PUA bullshit, okay? So this is the hot dude model above here, right? <clears throat> this is H, D, L, hot dude life up here, okay? Now, this is the not dude life down here. This is not dude life, okay? This is the, the 21 convention guys' plans. Um, they say you you have your house here, right? And then they say you go to one date location, then another date location, and then another date location. And their nerdy, dumb, idiot logic is like, oh, you compound experiences, and therefore she feels more attached to you, and then she will have sex with you. Okay, no, you fucking dork. That's not how the real world works. All right? All you're doing is is getting further and further away from your P-O-P, your point of penetration, okay, where you're going to have sex. If you're, gonna, you're just going to keep bouncing further and further and further away. No, it doesn't work like that, okay? Time kills all deals, okay? You guys understand that? Type it in the chat right now. I want to ingrain this into your head. Time kills kills all deals write it in the chat time kills all deals okay what you're doing is let's 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 just say okay we're gonna use purple so let's say first date location she's at a 90 okay she's at a 90 percent interest rate 90 percent interest means she will fucking raw dog you no problem on the first date if you have no condom she'll be like oh okay whatever just uh Oh, don't come inside me. <laughs> it's okay. I'll abort it anyways, right? But then you go from here, <clears throat> and eat, let's say you're, you're doing really good, right? Let's say you go, and, and then the next date location, she gets up to 95, right? She gets really hot. Right here, when her, when her interest is hot at these levels, that's when you're supposed to make the bounce back to your place to have the old S-E-X, right? To have sex. Then... You keep bouncing her, and then you're going to go to another place. And guess what? Now she's like, okay, well, I'm starting to feel fat. I'm starting to feel bored. All, you know, 
Justin just texted me or Brad just texted me and he's so much better than this guy or, you know, I really wanted to fuck him, but I went out with this guy and like, you know, second notice, you know, he's my second choice. And now she's down at 70, right? <clears throat> now you're ending the date here and she's at a 70 lower than when you started over here. You see? Your goal is to save time and money and emotional frustration. So that is why this down here is the not dude life, okay? This is trash. How many of you guys have done multiple dates, multiple fucking everything, and guess what? Nothing came from it. How many guys? Huh? I guarantee you motherfuckers, there's a bunch of you that happened. How do I know? It happened to me too when I was a dumb fool, okay? Fuck this. You see, I'm scribbling this because I hate it that much because it's such bullshit, okay? The hot dude life model is the way to go, okay? <clears throat> this is the way to go about it. Oh, you know what's funny? Oh, that, that fat fucker Socrates called me a bathrobe pervert. I was like, motherfucker, first of all, you're just mad because bathrobes fit me. Second of all, uh, yeah, I am. Like, I like to have sex, and I'm not ashamed of it. Just like how you are not ashamed of your relationship with calories, right? <clears throat> Hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Hot dude life up here. Okay. 10 minutes max. Your goal when you're on the date with her is to take her interest level up. Okay. So her, let's say her interest level starts here. Like let's say it's 70. Right. But you're listening. You're having a good time. You're cracking jokes. You're having a good old time. And then you bring her up to like a 90. Okay. How do you know she's at a 90? Body language mastery, baby. You'll start seeing the body language science. You'll start seeing the interests. She'll start doing all the things that I talk about in the course, which are concretely 1,000% true. Like I'm telling you guys, when you study body language, I told, I've been saying this all year, there is no going back. You cannot unsee this stuff. It is the ultimate red pill. Once you start seeing body language, you're going to see everybody who's attracted to you sexually, even people who you don't want to. Okay? You're going to see some cousins be like, oh, god damn, this motherfucker, get away from me. It's going to make you uncomfortable. But it is absolute power. Okay, Once you see this happening, this is when you say, okay, hey, we make the bounce. We go back to the car. We do the Rick Torres special. We go to the Love Hotel. We do the Baby Jacob special. Okay, We go back to my place. That's the Hot Dude Life special. That's me. Always back to my place. <clears throat> And then you give her a one-way ticket to pound town, okay? Bang, bang, bang. Cut off your stream in the middle of your pee, right? Cutting off your stream like Vince said. And you're just going to obliterate that vagina. Leave her in a puddle, as Vince said. Okay? That's the model we're going to review today. So this is a this is a little, for you visual learners out there, this is, this is what it is, okay? This shit down here is garbage. Fuck this shit, okay? <clears throat> now, are there any questions before we clarify? Put them in the chat right now if you have any questions. Remember, and one more thing, what kills all deals, guys? Please tell me what kills all deals. What kills all deals? Tell me. Tell me quickly. What is the one that, what, is, what kills all deals? Let me know. Time, exactly. Time kills all deals, exactly. Uh, let me see what's up. Uh, da, 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 da. let's see. Ninety equals pickup truck time. Says Rick Torres. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yep. Wasted John says even dudes for fuck's sake, shit's unreal. Yeah, you're gonna see some of your buddies that are attracted to you. It's kind of weird. Uh, Adam Simmons says I've done two to three locations, but always make sure it gets closer to mine's or hers, not further away. Have a good closing rate. That's good. That's good. Um. I've got a <clears throat> guys. Don't write anything in the chat. It's gonna get me banned. Okay. Um, D money says notice dates body language during coffee. Immediately knew she was uncomfortable. Pulled back a bit. She opened up. I wouldn't have noticed this had I not signed up for body language master. Exactly. Uh, Aguilas says uh, Ag Agil Silaus. What a difficult name. Can you just change that to like hot dude number five? Uh, he says. What do you think of the black label logic idea of waiting for sex till second or third date to make them into a plate that lasts longer? No, because if you give her high quality sex 
and you really blow her away, um, she'll stick around. She'll stick around. And then, you know, I, I don't believe in that philosophy. Like, you know, I just don't. <clears throat> I think the only thing it does is like when you bring a girl over. Afi Kingdom was talking about this, and he's saying like, you know, when you bring a girl over, right, and you don't have sex with her, or maybe she only sucks your dick, or like, you know, she's she's gonna be thinking like, damn, I have this like, I have pussy, and like this motherfucker is like not even like jumping all over me. What the hell? That will short circuit her brain a little bit. You bring a girl over, you get her completely naked, then you don't have sex with her. You tell her to put her clothes back on. And like, hey, you know, I'm really just not feeling it right now. Sorry. She's going to go home thinking about you all night. I, you guys told you the story, right? When I, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. I used to be dating a, a BPD chick, borderline personality disorder, okay? BPD means borderline personality disorder, not bipolar. She was really a borderline personality. She was cutting herself. She was a real psychopath, right? And she really got into my head and fucked my head. So I had some side hoes at the time. And one of my other side bitches came over and was like sucking my dick. But I was so emotionally fucked up that she was sucking my dick and it was just like a wet noodle. She was sucking it. She was sucking it for like 10 minutes and couldn't even get me hard, right? I was just fucked up in the head. And we just we watched some Spider-Man and then I sent her on her way. We kissed. I sucked on her titties, whatever. And um, then I was like, all right, see you later, baby. I'll see you next time. And then at like 3 o'clock in the morning, she sent me this text message. It was long-ass text message. She's like, I'm so sorry I couldn't satisfy you. I really just can't believe that I didn't have what it takes. And, oh, my God, just, this is, it makes me feel so bad. Will you please see me again? I don't know what's going on. And I was just like, didn't even think about it at the time. But this bitch is like keeping her up at night. She's like, damn, this motherfucker's not interested in me. Like, what do I have to do? Like, you have to put a banana up my ass, ball gag, fucking dress up like Sailor Moon, whatever. I'll do it. I swear to God, I'll do it. She came over ne like next time. In Japan, when the when you get a, when you want to get a really nice gift for somebody, you buy them really expensive fruit. So she came over like some twenty five dollar grapes. She's like, hey, I got you. I brought you some grapes. I was like, hell yeah, love grapes, especially expensive, nice Japanese ones, right? So there's like you can buy like a cantaloupe here for a hundred dollars. There's like hundred dollar strawberries. It's like a very, uh, you know, that's why these people are so healthy. It's like a really uh, healthy uh, gift to give somebody. But yeah, so she it kept her up all night. So when you do that, you really short circuit their brain. So I don't I don't necessarily a hundred percent agree with that. Um, it, it, my experience has been different, um, and I I also have like razor 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 sharp game. So um, you know, it's just a little bit different for me. But yeah, guys, time kills all deals. Remember that. Time kills all deals. Don't forget. Um, let's see. Uh, my Starbucks, my closest Starbucks is 30 minutes by train. Then you got to find someplace different. You have to find, uh, you have to find something different. Unknown Unknown says, she sucked you and then you kissed <laughs> Devil Horns. Hey, I'm a nasty motherfucker, bro. I'll do anything unless it's like, I don't I don't eat ass. I don't do that shit. That's disgusting. Um, so anything involving shit and my mouth and my genitals, I don't do. Um, and, if, and if I come in her mouth, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't kiss her if like, if there's come. But anything else if like, man, if, like, if she was sucking my dick and then she wants to kiss me, I'm like, ah, fuck it, whatever. Let's see what I taste like. <laughs> Peak narcissism right there. <laughs> Uh, so anyways, uh, leave the site. Yeah, okay. Whiteboard's done. Um, MLD knows how to suck tits. I do. Love titties, bro. Love titties. Um, so anyways, yeah, I'm a nasty motherfucker, boys. I don't give a shit, bro. I'm a dog, man. I'll lick that. I, you know, it's good. You gotta, you gotta do it to, you gotta do it to them, too. When you're licking the pussy, like, and the pussy's really wet, and you're like, ah, 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 and it's all, you know, you get all that pussy juice, like, all around your face. And it's all around your lips and stuff. And then you're eating her out. And you just go up there and you kiss her. And you give her like the, the most like fucking ah, kiss. Oh, it's animalistic, man. It's fucking primal. Love it. Uh, <laughs> 2020 is the year of mummification. Oh, my God. Vince is mummifying these hoes. Oh, my God. I didn't even know that was real. I did not even know. Oh, it's hilarious, dude. <laughs> 2020 is the year of mummification. Oh, my God. <laughs> I fucking love it. Uh, so, Peter, you say your nearest Starbucks is 30 minutes away. Then you have to find somebody. Um, you have to find somebody, like, near or someplace near. It could be a pub. It doesn't have to be a Starbucks. It could be, like, a coffee shop. Just something near your place, right? Uh, 
there's a place I, near my house that serves chicken. All right, and I, I like to go there because from there to my house, it's like uh, I think I've timed it. It's like a it's like a eight minute and forty five second walk. Right? How about Farker and her place? So okay, good question you asked there, Ben. Um, <laughs> somebody explained to Muhammad the mummification about yesterday. <laughs> oh, Muhammad. <laughs> he says, I'm Egyptian. What am I missing here? Oh, Lord. Somebody explain to Muhammad. So Ben says, how about fucking her in her place? Okay, that's another first date mistake guys make. Here's the thing. Most of these girls live in absolute filth, okay? Especially if she's a hoe, okay? Their house is so dirty and it's so nasty, right, that they, you know, some of them have cats, some of them have cats and dogs, right? You know, some of them are really slobs, right? They're just dirty and they don't want to bring you back to their place. Maybe they weren't planning to fuck you. Sometimes girls just go on a date and then they, on the date, they find themselves falling for you and then you know, you say, let's go back to their place and it's a complete total mess, right? So I, I don't rely on going back to a girl's place because if you go, if you rely on that, you don't have control of the situation and therefore, when you don't have control, you don't have leverage. When you don't have leverage, you can't lead correctly. And if you can't lead correctly, you can't get what you want in this situation and that is sex on the first date. Does that make sense to you guys in the audience, right? Let me know. Um, so... Because I, you know, you're, the girl has to be extremely into you. Because I have gone on dates with girls where I've suggested, well, we're near your place. Let's go back to your place. And then who has who's had this happen? She she makes you wait outside the front door for like five minutes while she goes inside and cleans up real quick. Who's done? Who Give me a five in the chat if you had to wait five minutes outside and you had to wait for her to clean up her filth of a house. And, you know, she probably goes in there. She probably washes her pussy a little bit too, right? You'll notice that when they come over to your place. Oh, can I go to the bathroom before you guys have sex? They'll go to the bathroom. What they'll do is, like, they'll wipe their pussy in the in the toilet and they'll, like, wipe themselves with uh, toilet paper and stuff. They'll clean their pussy off, right? Oh, a lot of guys have had this happen. Awesome. Fuck yeah. Good, good, good. All right. Good, good, good. Uh, you letting a girl lick your ass first date, John? Uh, well, funny story. Um, I used to date this really cute petite girl. She was like five foot. She's beautiful girl, like stunningly beautiful. And, um, I remember she like got drunk one time and came over and this is like a, she's probably like five foot, probably 110 pounds, right? Maybe like five foot one. And I never forget. She was so drunk and she like, was like wrestling me. She was like fighting me. She was like, like in Japanese girls never get aggressive, right? And she was like oh, wrestling me, holding my leg. And she was like, stop. And with her like high pitch, she was like, stop moving. Stop moving. No, no. And she was holding me down and like pulling open my butt cheeks and trying to lick my ass. And I was like, Sakiko, what the fuck are you doing? And she's like, don't move. Don't move. And I was like, what are you fucking doing? I've never had somebody lick my asshole before. So and I was, uh, how old was I at the time? I was 29. And, um, and then I was just like, ah, fuck it, whatever, just lick my ass. And I was like, oh, my God, this is ticklish. And then I just, I, eventually I just overpowered her. I was like, okay, this is weird. And, um, but yeah, she, she wanted to lick my asshole. I don't, I don't understand that. That shit is weird, dude. I don't want to put my mouth near any form of shit. So you guys that eat ass, that shit's weird. I know Donovan Sharp don't eat ass. He's on the same fucking ass, non-eating ass campaign as I am. <laughs> Her name is not Saki. Her name is uh, Sakiko. That's her name, Sakiko. Um, she was she was a beauty. She was a real beauty. Um, so yeah, I just let her. <laughs> I just let her do it. <laughs> and so, so yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I tried to get. I don't know what that means. Okay, anyways, do kiss her after that. <laughs> you nasty. <laughs> Oh, no Nutella starfish from y'all. Y'all motherfuckers crazy. So anyways, uh, let's review the audio, shall we? Let's, let's, let, we're going to gonna peak narcissism here. We're going to listen to this to audio. Uh, please give me, let me know if you guys can hear this. Okay, here we go. All right. Welcome to Modern Life Dating Podcast, episode two. 
Um, I am going to jump right into it. I got a message from a viewer on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter at Modern Life Dater. Yeah. And he wanted to know. That was like my first round at Twitter before I got banned three times later. <laughs> how do I go from getting a girl's number to getting her on a date? to getting her back to my house and then having sex with her, okay? Very simple process. Usually runs me about $14 to do this. And that's if I pay for her. Super simple, super easy. And we're just gonna jump right into it. So from the moment I get the girl's number, I get it, I lock it in. And then once I get the number, I, I peace out, I leave. I'm, I'm a ghost. And so from that point, I don't start texting her like I'm her little her little BFF, her little male best friend or her little butt buddy or whatever you guys do in texting these girls too much. I don't do that shit. The phone is to be used initially only to set up dates in real life before you have sex with her. After you have sex with her, you can start texting and and calling her and stuff, but you don't want to be you don't want to be too much about it, okay? Um <clears throat> Adam says I never do lunch dates. Closing of the day is way more difficult. No, it's not. You just can't be eating. Don't go on the dates, okay? Full stomachs make women not horny. They want to like get out. They don't feel sexy. They like, women feel fat after they eat. They're like, ugh, you know? And eating and, like, that just mix. Like, have a coffee, have some drinks. Don't don't do it. And another thing, uh, I'd like to bring up a good point that I brought up uh, is that <clears throat> when you are getting the girl's number in public or whatever, once you get the number, bounce out of there. Boom, I'm out. Batman, fucking throw a smoke pellet on the floor, disappear, right? I'm out. Boom, see you later. This ain't a fucking charity, right? We're, we're not sitting around giving around free time. All right, we are there to get the number and get the girl. That's it. So you make it happen. You get the fucking number and you get the fuck out. Disappear. And then you go follow up later, okay? So what I do, get the number, and then I usually wait a few days, see if she texts me first. I let her know my number. My I'll usually text her and be like, "Okay, hey, it's me. It's it's Jonathan," and then see what they do to reply. And then I just leave it at that. I don't I don't send anything. Let a few days go by, three or four days, and at this time, I look at my schedule, and I determine when I'm going to take this girl out. And all the girls are the same right now. Right now, I'm in the United States. Um, I really don't like dating girls from the USA. It's just, I, I see it, quite frankly, as a business. I see it as a low return of investment. Um, the ROI is really low, and I don't like it. So I go with them to Starbucks to have a coffee. Why? Because every girl loves Starbucks. Every yeah. girl is just... It's like their kryptonite. They love Starbucks all over the world. Everywhere I've been, they love it. I think the only girls that don't like Starbucks are Australian girls because Australia, Starbucks is just not popular in Australia. But other than that, um, yeah, guys, Starbucks is like, it's it's such a kryptonite for these girls. But yeah, you want to just go, let's go grab a Starbucks, you know? Like every girl wants to be seen. Like it, it's fashionable to be seen with the Starbucks coffee cup. And they all love it. Like, anytime you ever go to the register with a girl, like, I want a, fam I want a caramel frappuccino with, like, a double pump and blah, 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 blah soy free latte, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they know everything that they fucking want, like, you know, head to toe. So um, it, it's kind of like it's an easier guess to get as well. And it's low, um, it's low risk for you. And, it, and it's low financial risk and it's a low time risk. So I usually say to them, I hit him up with a text message, and I say, hey, how are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Small banter. Two to three texts maximum. Maximum. Okay? And then I say to the girl, 
let's meet. And then I tell her the time, the place, and the activity. Time, 7 p.m., place, Starbucks near uh, University Boulevard. And then activity, have some coffee, chat, get to know each other. Don't ask her, tell her. Don't say, hey, I, I was wondering if you're free, maybe we could go and have some coffee if you don't mind. Like, it's just weak. That's weak. Tell her what you're going to do. Okay? And now when you tell her this, there are only three things that will happen. You hear that, Josh? I know you're in the, in the chat, buddy. Uh, you guys got to get used to issuing commands. Stop with this egalitarian, oh, honey, if if it wouldn't offend you, I would like to uh, help you. Uh, maybe we can have a Starbucks. I was kind of wondering if, if, if you weren't offended and, 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 and you wouldn't me to me. It's fucking weak and it's pathetic, all right? It disgusts me as a man. It 5,000x disgusts her as a woman, okay? Keep that in mind. And you can take this to the bank. Only three things in this universe are possible to happen next. A, she says yes. In that situation, you say good. See you there. B, she says no. And at that point, I just kind of leave it dead in the water. I just say, if I don't even feel like replying, I don't. It depends on how much I value the girl. If I value her, I'll be like, okay, maybe another time. That's all she gets. If she's a low-value girl that I really don't care about, I won't even reply back. And then uh, the third one, she'll say no, but she will counter-offer. And this is a good thing. Counter-offer. All girls do this all over the world. To this okay? day. To Every this fucking single day. single girl, they have the same basis for that feminine imperative. They all have the same center, the same foundation, and this is part of it. Yes. What is a counteroffer? For example, hey, Julie, let's meet at Starbucks Friday, 7 p.m., have some coffee and get to know each other. Julie replies, I'm sorry I can't, but I'm free on Sunday, or I'm free on Saturday. She makes an attempt herself to try and meet you. And that's a good sign. And from there, if you're quick on your feet, right off the bat, you can just say to your, you know, think and say, okay, then let's do Saturday, 6 p.m., Starbucks, University Boulevard. Work with her because she's working with you. And if she's working with you, she likes you, okay? And now, if she says yes or if she counteroffers, which is basically a delayed yes, this means she likes you. This means she likes you, okay? That's it. Okay? So, now we're going on the date. I'm going to talk you through the last two. Um, are these the last two girls? Uh, two of the most recent girls I fucked back-to-back -back using this method. Um, literally verbatim what I'm going to tell you is exactly what I did. So <clears throat> what happened is, is this, right? We met at Starbucks. I like to show up a little late. I like to have them there waiting for me first because I live right down the road from the Starbucks. All my dates I plan near my house because I'm already thinking from the moment I get her information, I'm thinking I'm gonna fuck this girl and how am I gonna have sex with her in the least amount of time, okay? All this two dates, three dates, four dates, six dates bullshit, you gotta get that out of your mind. Um, but if you're a newer guy and you're still learning this, that's okay, that's okay. I am a veteran, I am 31. I have been fucking girls for 14 years. 
I am a professional womanizer, and I have streamlined this shit to work for me. 2015 was and my year. Me. 2016 is also and my year. Every year is my fucking year. Hologram says, John, I only bang tens. Love, Hologram. We love you too, Hologram. We love you too. Guys, if you want to send a donation, please go ahead and click on that link that I just put in the chat right there. Streamlabs.com forward slash Modern Life Dating Channel. That allows you to get me whatever you want to send, and I get 97% of it. But if you donate through the YouTube Super Chat, I only get 70%. Big, big, big difference. Um, <clears throat> let's just continue. You guys liking this? In the sense that what works best for me. Is this valuable to you guys? Is anybody learning anything, or am I just wasting my time? Am I wasting your time? Let me know. Is this working? Please let me know. Maybe you like to spend time with these girls. Maybe you get a thrill off of hearing them talk, whatever. Me, I'm just all about in there. Bust my nut and on to the next one. So that is how I'm going to tell you I do it. So let's talk about the last girl. Her name is Julie. Um, I, I showed up late. She texted me. She was there. I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to be there soon. Okay, now I want to elaborate on showing up late a little bit here, okay? The reason is you show up late, right, is because <clears throat> when you are uh, – when she's like, hey, I'm here, right, that's what I would do. I would I, – then I would let them, okay, um, I would let them know that I'm, I'm going to be there soon because what that does is it puts you in the driver's seat. You are now in control of the situation. Does that make sense to you guys? Now you're in control. She's waiting for you. And in a, in a subtle form, she is submitting to your will already. Because you're saying, I'm there. You wait for me. I'm the prize. I shall arrive when I arrive, right? A Jedi is never late nor on time. He simply arrives when he needs to arrive, okay? Um, so... It's a thing about it's about control and it's about setting the boundaries and setting the the terms of agreement for the relationship at the initial steps, right? Now I'm not telling you make this bitch wait 30 minutes. Okay? But let her sweat a little bit. You know, these girls got ego. Let her sweat five, ten minutes, you know? Nothing wrong. My house is five minutes down the road. I geared up and I went down there. Another reason why I show up late is because they pay for their coffee and they buy their own coffee usually. And that's if you want to be a cheapskate. <laughs> that way, I don't have to spend money on these hoes because they are not worth a dime in the hoes section. You know, if I'm going out with a good girl or whatever, if I meet a good girl who has good morals and she's like a legitimately good person, I don't mind spending time and money on the girl because I'm there because I truly enjoy the kind of character that this woman brings to the table. But... If she's just some dirty hoe from a Tinder or and I'm just I'm just looking to bust a nut, she ain't getting a dime, sister. No, no, no. So uh, show up late and uh, and if it backfires or whatever, I mean, congratulations. She she got a seven dollar venti Starbucks coffee out of me. You know, uh, she's not allowed to buy pastries and all this shit. I am not her ATM. No, no, that's not how this works. Um, so I showed up and I got to the date. So now what I do, usually I size up the girl as soon as I meet her. If, if I outrank her in terms of like looks and intelligence and status, immediately I, I'm, I'm like, I'm going for the clothes. I'm going for gung-ho. That's another thing. You see, you guys got to profile these bitches, okay? A lot of you guys, um, you got low self-esteem and you got low, you got low, uh, Self value, uh, okay. Now, a everybody knows that I'm a very big, ad very big advocate of dressing well. We actually did the whole fashion breakdown in the body language mastery webinars. You guys, remember we talked with the uh, old baby Jared and uh, set him straight with his fashion and all these things, right? <clears throat> so. When you're looking good, you know, and guys, you know, guys in our community dress really well. Like, you know, we got Aaron, who's a new member of the community. He's actually a professional tailor. Um, we got uh, Tommy Bahama. Motherfucker is always looking fresh. He's always got a fresh haircut, you know, good body, fucking well-fitting clothing. 
uh, Myron Gaines, uh, Corey, Big Googs, Ivor's got really good fashion. You know, all of these dudes. When you show up on the date and you're in better shape, you know you make more money, right? You know you're smarter. You know you look better. Like, that's where you really get to kind of call the shots. And, you know, you can kind of, you can kind of, you can kind of be a little bit more aggressive with your advances and being like, listen, bitch, like, I outrank you, okay? I am a level 10 hot dude. You are a level 7 babe. So it's comply or goodbye, right? That's when you kind of really, you have to know if you can outrank her. And then you, like, when you outrank her, you're like, all right, like, this bitch is doing what I say, okay? Um, so, and what I mean is, like, I'm trying to fuck her immediately, like, under one hour. I'm going to try and fuck her. And it's possible. I remember when somebody told me this, I didn't believe them. I didn't believe them at all. I thought they were lying to me. But it's totally true. This is what I do. This is who I am. This is what I live. Oh, I shit. Breathe. Aaron, you're listening. What's up, man? Thanks for listening. Oh, yeah, I was just talking about you. Yeah, Aaron's the guy. He's a professional tailor. Um, and uh, he's in the community as well. He says, more powerful body language than if you had absolutely no fashion but a fat wallet. Absolutely. It's like that speech Bane gives in The Dark Knight. He's like, you know. You think darkness is your ally, but I was born in it, bred in it, you know. These guys think they know game, but like I live and I breathe and I am seduction. This is what I do. That's why I'm talking into a, a microphone in my room by myself for a gentleman on Twitter. This is what I do for you guys. So went off on a little tangent there, but let's get back to the main point. Sit down next to her. Julie was a cute girl, white, blonde. Great tits, great, great tits. Um, real shy, real introverted, uh, nice body. She was 24, 25, 24, 25. I remember this pussy. I don't know, about five, six years this younger than me. This is a good pussy. Good. Some great white titties. So good. Um, white girl titties are great. Sat down at the table with her. She's a little mousy. She was a little shy kind of girl. So I just sat down, and um, what you do is... You want to be talking about 30% of the time. And for her, you want her talking 70% of the time. This is how women build a bond with you. They start talking mm -hmm. and talking. They just love talking. And what does every woman love to talk about? What's their top subject? What's the top subject, boys? What's the number one thing women like to talk about? We're going to quiz you in the chat Right now, what's the number one thing? Oh, look at that. Hologram with the speed herself. Bingo. Hologram, you're the winner. Good job. It's themselves. Women love to talk about themselves. You know, there's a famous quote in Robert Greene's book, uh, ask a man about himself and he will talk for hours. You know, something along those lines. So what my basic formula is, I start with her life story. From... The beginning, where were you born? Oh, cool. You were born in, where was she born? She was born in Pennsylvania. Oh, you were born in Pennsylvania. Cool. Did you ever go to the Hershey's factory? And you guys remember how I remember this shit? Like, you see, I'm, 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 I'm recording this after, but even after I remember this shit. You have to be what is called an active listener, okay? You have to actively be involved. Excuse me. You have to actively be involved in the conversation. Do you understand? And you have to remember you have to remember this stuff. You actually have to be interested in this person because this will give you ammunition for you to spin your psychological web of seduction. Okay? Um, do you like any football teams from there? What's your family like? Mom, dad, sisters, what do you got? And she'll she went on and went on. And then I said, What were you like in elementary school? You know? Were you like in middle school? What clubs were you in? Were you nerd? Were you popular? And and truly take an interest in this girl. Truly listen. You have to be an active listener. Don't be on your fucking phone. Don't let her be on her phone either. You know, have a conversation. Be normal. Listen to her. Give her feedback. Oh, your family is a fishing family. Wow, I've never met somebody with a fishing family. Her family wasn't that, but I'm just giving you an example. Okay, and then you bring them up all the way to their current life. I asked her about um, she was here for the Disney program in Orlando, and then I um, 
just was chatting with her and you know and then you s slowly kind of sneak in there with the with the touches you know touch her hand and you know just make it a very human experience you know be sensual be in the moment enjoy it um i touched her hand made a lot of jokes you know i'm not i'm not a clown but you know kind of cracked some jokes got her laughing and if she's interested she's going to start talking and asking you about yourself if she's a self-centered cunt She's just going to keep talking and talking and talking about herself, which I've been on Good work, soldier. Like this. Let me tell you something. I would rather have a fucking lamectomy than uh, to go through that again. Athel, but, thank uh, you for the six dollars. Says, let me buy a cup sure. of coffee, sensei. Thank you. Um, thank you. So with Julie, she came out to visit and she told me she had to be at class within an hour and a half. I was there with her. For about 40 minutes, and I said, well, you know what? You seem busy. And she was like, well, I don't want to go to your house. I invited her to my house. I was like, hey, you want to come to my house? I can show you some videos or that I have from traveling the world. When you invite them back to your house, you have to make it seem cool, casual, and not sketch. She knows it's for sex. You know it's for sex. But you can't directly say it's for sex because it's just some kind of weird, fucked up thing in women world. Like you have to give them plausible deniability in the sense that I say, come back to my house so we can check out X, where X does not verbally equal your penis, but in reality, X is definitely your penis you're just giving them all my math majors pick up on that atham i'm gonna break that down for the boys okay you can invite her back to see x what is my go-to hey girl i travel i have a passport i got more money than you i'm better than you i'm more cultured than you you ever been to t you ever been to Colombia? you ever eat scorpions in the street of thailand you ever jump in a cage and swim with sharks on the north shore of hawaii have you ever been to korea you ever shoot guns in Vietnam, right? Oh, James Miller, you fucking dog. I have a backyard fire pit. I build a fire. Well, I know where Hot Dude Con 2020 after party's going to be. Year. 2016 <laughs> is also my year. I love Every it. Every year is my fucking year. I have a backyard fire pit. I build a fire. That's wonderful. You see what I'm talking about, boys? So I tell them I travel the world. I'm 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 far more well traveled than the average person, right? Let alone the average basic bitch. And then I tell them, well, I take my camera with me and I film everything, you know, like I love making videos. I love traveling, I love seeing all these different aspects of life and it's really cool. And I say I I mentioned that during the date, right? During the you have to you have to put these seeds of seduction at the beginning, like let's just use okay. So let's say this is sex. This is the date starting, right? So hey, oh how nice to meet you. Awkward. Hey, stranger from the internet who wants to have sex with me. Oh uh, blah blah blah. That we talk or you know whatever. If you meet her in real life, right? You do the initiation, purchasing coffee. Then you start talking about her life and get a little bit. And then right here, you put a little hint. Oh yeah, I travel a lot. And she's like, oh really? Where do you travel? I'm like I've been here, here, and here. And then she keeps running her mouth. Blah 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 blah. Oh, yeah, I've been there, and, you know, they have something like that in fucking Denmark. Do you know in Denmark they have, like, these hot dogs that are covered in bacon, and they're delicious, and 7-Elevens are everywhere. Like, oh, my God, really? That's so cool. And, yeah, yeah, and like, yeah, I took some videos of it. It's actually my hobby. Wow, really? Videos are hobby? Cool. They keep talking to her. Blah, 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 blah. Maybe mention it one more time here, slightly. And then you get to the fucking the point where she has to come to Christ or she has to get the fuck out of the way. And it's here when you're like, hey. Let's go check out these videos. Let's go check out these videos. They're really cool. Come with me. And she's like, mm, well, if she likes it, she's like, okay. She's, she's like on the fish. She's like, oh, I don't know. But come on. It's, it's five seconds down the road. Let's go. Come on. And then you guide them and you make it happen. And then bang, bang, bang. That's it. Bring them back to your place. It's that simple. It's that simple. So you, if, you, if your guy plays a guitar, like James Miller is like, uh, you know, he has a backyard fire pit. He's like, let's build a fire. Let's stay warm. Let's enjoy this. You know, eat some s'mores, whatever we got to do. Play with my dogs. If you got a dog, game over, you know. You know, it's good if you have a dog. It's like, you know, talk about your dog. Talk about your dog throughout the date. And then be like, you can kind of jokingly say like, yeah, you know, um, 
we can fucking do this. Uh, come to me, and uh, you know, l- let's uh, let's go hang out with my dog. Let's see if my dog likes you, right? That's always it, because girls always want to meet a dog, and they always want to see if the dog likes them. Right? But like, yeah, I don't know if I could trust you. Let me see if my dog likes you. If my dog likes you, then I'll then I'll ma- maybe I'll trust you. But uh, you know, I don't know. You know. We're gonna have to let Scruffy do the decision there. Okay, let's keep listening. Um plausible deniability hey let's come back to my house check videos out let's come back to my house you could pet my dog let's come back to my house i have whiskey you know many different ways to say this and uh and i said like i said i've done this all over the world I've done it in korea I've done it in hawaii I've done it in florida I did it in colombia um i've done it all over the world and this works julie was a little apprehensive and she said no because she has to study for her test and then school and all of that so that was fine with me because I was just thinking to myself hey I don't care I'll just get back on the grind and find another girl I left and then I started like texting her I was like god you're so sexy you know I really want to hang out with you pay attention you should you should uh, study hard for your tests, and then after, come hang out with me for like 30 minutes. And I- Tom Bombadil says, let's go back and read the Bible. I don't know if he's, if he's joking, but if you got Christian girls, gentlemen, that will work. Honey, let's go check out Hillsong's new album. I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to show you my dreams and aspirations of becoming a youth church leader. I want to. I want to read. Uh, I want to read Proverbs, chapter thirty-one to you. And you know, I just want to, you know, just look at you as as the beautiful, sacred wife that you are. All right. There's so many ways, dude. There's so many ways. You guys got to think big. Open your minds. These girls are lining up, dying to give away the pussy. Okay. Are you going to take it? Are you man enough to take it? Do you have the confidence and the balls to make it happen? Think about it. I knew that if she said yes to hanging out with me after she specifically said no because she felt like, you know, maybe it would be too fast. After she said yes, I knew it was game over. She finished her class, finished her test, texted me, hey, I'm going to get some food and come hang out with you. I said, cool, let's, let's watch some Netflix and hang out or whatever. Um, she came over. I answered the door in my robe, and she knew what was going down. I knew what was going down. You hear that, boys? I've been rocking that robe game for the longest time. You hear what I said there? This was before I even wore a robe on the Internet. This is not a fucking act. This is not a fucking act. This is really me. I am the robe-dwelling playboy, okay? You heard that? I answered the door in the robe. When you answer the door in the robe, they know what's up. They know. Okay, especially if it's a nice robe. Like, I didn't understand that having a nice, like, Versace robe would do so well for me, but it does work wonders. Now, just because you go buy a robe doesn't mean, like, okay, now I have game. No, okay? The game is you. You should be able to bang a fucking girl if all you have is a cardboard box. That's real game. Okay, game is not an external thing. It's not something that you just like. I like for you guys. Some of you guys think like I'm just gonna buy a consultation, and then I'll be fixed, or I'll just buy body language mastery and I'll be fixed. No, it takes time to become the man. All right, that is uh, who embodies game. Right? You have to become it. It doesn't. It's not a script. It has to become who you are. Do you understand me, guys? Does that make sense to you, gentlemen out there? But once you get that sorted, then they know, oh, damn, this motherfucker has the balls to answer the door in a robe, and he's wearing a fucking Versace robe. Who the fuck is this guy? And it doesn't even need to be a Versace robe. It could be a nice robe. You could steal the robe from the fucking Hyatt, you know, whatever, as long as it looks good. They know what's up. They know what's up. Went to my room, threw on some Walking Dead. She's like, I don't like the Walking Dead. Too bad, sister, because we're watching The Walking Dead. Welcome to Kingdom of Jonathan. Um, and put it on. It was, I was watching it for like 10 minutes because I was actually really interested in The Walking Dead. 
more than I was her. Uh, that's just where I am in the game. I just don't give too much of a shit about women. Like I care more about helping men out with in this situation so they can get to the point where I am, where I want to build myself up and find happiness and stuff in life. And um, so she and I on the bed, 10 minutes in, I was watching some blood and gore. And then I started feeling horny and I rolled over, just gave her a kiss on the lips, started to undress her, and we had sex. It's that simple, guys. Just like that. Cost me about, how much was my coffee? I had like a white mocha, hot white mocha, whatever fucking shit they serve there. Um, it was like maybe $6. And, you know, we were there. Bang, bang, bang. It was over. I looked at my watch. She got dressed and, you know, went to the bathroom, washed up or whatever. We watched some Walking Dead. And then I was like, well, it's getting kind of late. I think you should leave. And she's like, okay. I walked her out, gave her a kiss. And that was that. It's just like that, boys. No, no, nothing super complicated. Keep it simple. Okay, that's it. So, quickest way to get my That's it, boys. That's how you do it. It's that simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Keep it simple. Keep it fucking simple. Okay? Uh, you know, don't be taking her to go fucking watch some three-hour-long movie. Okay? Don't be wasting your time going to a full five-course meal with this chicks. Okay? Nothing. Do not waste your time. Time is your ultimate asset. You get out there and you make this shit. <coughs> Jesus Christ. You get out there and you make this shit happen. Okay? It <coughs> Christ in Bethlehem. I'm going to fucking die on stream. <coughs> Excuse me. It's dry air, man. It fucking sucks. Um, You know. Um, But yeah, it's, it's really that simple. It's really, really that simple. That it, That's it. It doesn't need to be rocket science, okay? It doesn't really need to be rocket science. Can you put this audio as a bonus in Body Language Mastery to rehear it? Uh, I'll, I will post it in the Facebook group. Just remind me. I'm super slammed right now. Um, I've been fucking working my ass off. So uh, I, I got to put out the new course. I'm, I'm refilming. I'm doing ads. I'm like, I, I'm so swamped right now. But remind me and I'll, uh, you know I got you, bro. You know I got you. Uh, speaking of Body Language Mastery, guys, don't forget. Uh, modernlifedating.com forward slash body language we're 16 days 3 hours 9 minutes away um, modernlifedating.com forward slash body language scroll down click on this link right here and then scroll down click on this email address and then you're going to put your address in here right so you do not want to miss out put your best email address in here hit subscribe and you will be on the waiting list for quarter 4 December 26 December 26 December 26 type it in the chat december 26 christmas comes twice this year guys this is the time that you really need to make it fucking work josh i got a humidifier in the other room um and it's a 200 hundred dollar one <clears throat> uh the fucking this year is ending we're starting a new decade do not let this year slip you by. Some of you guys joined Body Language Mastery Quarter 1. You didn't attend any webinars. You didn't participate in the group. You blew it. You guys had already joined. You have access to these Quarter 4 webinars. And Quarter 4 webinars, they start on January 6th, okay? They start on January 6th, the Monday. And we're going to go for three weeks with some of the best speakers in the entire fucking planet right in the convenience, in the convenience of your pocket, your fucking smartphone, your laptop, your computer, whatever. It is there for you. You also get access to all the previous webinars. Those are being edited and uploaded right now. And then uh, Body Fitness Max is happening. Yeah, it's already out. It's being updated this week as well. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know, Felix. Do you not know that Body Fitness Max is already up? Check it out. <clears throat> Who is the guy on the recording? He on Twitter. The guy on the recording is me, buddy. <coughs> uh, so... Start off your year right. Remember, I always tell you guys, end the year strong, start the year strong. Okay? That way you can tackle these hiccups that come your way. Get in 
to Body Language Mastery, join the Masculine Empowerment Network, have conversations with me, with Rolo Tomasi, with Richard Cooper, with Donovan Sharp, with Ryan Stone, with, with Vince on BDSM, with Corey from A God Amongst Men, Myron Fitness, uh, Myron Gaines from Unplug Fit, we talk about getting your fitness right, Joe from Proud Masculine, also pr fitness, also TRT related for you guys that are taking testosterone. Okay, this is the total man plan, baby. This is the entire package. We have guys in there that help with hypnosis, removing trauma from your life. We have guys that are teaching about how to protect your assets financially, how to make money, how to what what areas are good, how to get your fucking finances right. I took a guy who was making eight hundred bucks a month, and now he's making way more than that. Okay, I've coached Lou who was making sixty grand. We got him a raise up to eighty grand. And now he's getting ready to get another raise, which might be skirting around 1, 110, 90, 95, somewhere around there. Okay, that's in one year, almost doubling his salary. So think about that. This is this is like not just, you know, um, this is not just like something stupid. Like I just sell you a PDF and then like, oh, you're, you're cured now. No, this is me taking time out of my life, investing in you because you invested in me. And I fucking deliver. The results are real. And you cannot deny them. Look at the testimonials. Look at all the guys in the chat. Look at everybody vouching for Body Language Mastery. The year is ending soon. December 26th. Get on the fucking waiting list. And I will see you guys tomorrow, 9 a.m. Or 8.45 a.m. Uh, for uh, Tokyo Crypto Show with me and Charlie from Cultivate Crypto. Until then, see you next time.